You know, if you're going to say to somebody the word God, if they don't understand the word the way you do, you're not going to communicate. Or if you say sin, and they don't understand sin the way you do, you're not going to communicate. You see, when I'm thinking about communicating the gospel, I like to think of communicating the gospel in regard to three basic aspects. First of all, the foundational aspect. There's the foundational history that Christ is creator, sin entered the world, death is a result of sin. Actually, that's foundational to understanding why the Son of God stepped into history to be Jesus, the God-man, to die on a cross because death was a penalty for sin, raised from the dead. That's the power of the gospel. And we also know it's a groaning world now because of sin. So one day there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth to come. The foundational knowledge, the power of the gospel, and the hope of the gospel. If I can say this, I, I want us to think carefully about this for a moment. I would suggest to you that most of the church, in fact, in our Western world, in fact, around the world, concentrates mainly on the power and the hope of the gospel, not the foundational aspects. For instance, there was a, a, a series of books. You know, w w when we talk about eschatology, now, as soon as I start talking about eschatology, some people get nervous. You're going to come out and tell us a particular view of eschatology and so on. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that because I, I, I just never deal with controversial issues. And so you don't have to worry about that. But there was a particular book series uh, out uh, called the Left Behind series. H how many of you purchased maybe the Left Behind series or even read the Left Behind series? Yeah, there's hands all over the rooms. And, you know, millions of Americans purchased that series. I'm not saying you should have, shouldn't have. It's just a matter of history, okay? But, you know, millions did purchase that series, which is about a particular view of eschatology, but most of those millions didn't buy creation books. Why? You know, one of the things I found in the church, and I found this in America, and I, I believe it's true in a, in a Western world, people in the church seem more interested in end times than in the beginning. In fact, one of the things I've noticed in America is that there are many churches to become a member of a church, you have to agree to a particular view of eschatology for that particular church. Now, I'm not saying a church shouldn't have a particular view of eschatology. I mean, eschatology is important too. But you, you have, to have, a particular, have to agree to a particular view of eschatology. But when it comes to Genesis, as long as you believe God created... Why is it we put an emphasis on you must have a particular view of eschatology, but when it comes to Genesis, you can believe in millions of years, evolution, doesn't matter, we're not sure what it means, as long as you believe God created eschatology, oh, you've got to have a particular view. Think about that for a moment. Now, I, I do that for this reason. You see, one of the things that I was asked once when I was on radio, it was a Presbyterian minister, actually, and he said to me, now, you agree that... The church can have different views of eschatology. There's pre-mill, R-mill, post-mill, and so on. I said, oh, yeah. And he said, and there's different views of Genesis, theistic evolution, gap theory, day-age theory, and so on. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, it's the same thing. I said, no, it's not. He said, why not? I said, because except for some extreme views of eschatology, for the, for the main views of eschatology, like pre-mill, post-mill, R-mill, you know, in most instances, really people... Uh, are looking at scripture, they have a high view of scripture, the authority of scripture, and they're trying to argue from scripture, you know, understanding Israel, Daniel, Ezekiel, Revelation, and so on, and looking at scripture, and, 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 and trying to come to some conclusions there. But the reason that people have different views of Genesis is because they're starting outside of the Bible with the secular views of this age and reinterpreting Genesis and coming up with those different positions to impose the idea of millions of years and so on on the Bible. And so in that sense, if we stand back and think about it, here's a problem. We often find in the church in America, we're prepared to take a particular view of eschatology and say, that's important, but when it comes to Genesis, it doesn't matter. And yet, I would suggest to you that it's because we're not taking a particular stand on Genesis, we're actually unlocking that door to undermine biblical authority in a way that different views of eschatology, by and large, are not. Think about that for a moment. Because, you see, when you're taking the pagan religion of the age and using that to, to reinterpret Genesis... That's different than arguing from Scripture and trying to come to some conclusions about things. You're taking ideas outside the Bible and deliberately changing the Word of God. I think it's a massive problem. And I think it's really symptomatic of the fact that the church, by and large, does not understand the foundational issues in our culture and have helped that foundational change.